A 68 year old man has now been identified as the person who apparently plowed his SUV into a group of six migrant farm workers who were standing outside of a Walmart. There had been a search for this individual after video was uncovered. Turns out it is Daniel Gonzalez who claims that he panicked and hit the gas. Well, as we said, video is available. So we're gonna play that for you and you can decide whether his argument makes sense or not. Okay, so you can see a bus that had dropped off these farm workers. It's to the left basically of the bus. You can see the the Gonzalez vehicle there turning, hitting the gas, running through a crowd of people and then fleeing the scene. So look, even trying to play devil's advocate here, I don't understand when someone uses I panicked and hit the gas. That's usually designed to mean I was scared of something. He was turning into a spot. I mean, if he's saying that he accidentally ran over people and then panicked and hit the gas and ran away, maybe. But that certainly looked like an optional thing. You have a crowd of people in front of you. There's no reason to continue past the the, the spot there. So. I don't know. He's going to have to make seems things. like a weird reflex, right? If you're driving and you panic, what do you do? You hit the brakes. You know, who hits the gas? I don't know. It yeah, just seems a little unusual. The gas. Who yeah. would be primed to hit the gas when turning into a spot in a relatively open parking lot? In any event, I'll leave it to his lawyers to try to convince people of that. I want to focus on the victims. Six people were hit. They were treated at Atrium Health Lincoln and sustained a variety of different injuries. None appear, at least at this point, to be life threatening. And the victims had all been released as of Sunday. Their employer, Jeff Krotz of Knob Creek Farm in Lawndale, said the group are in the US on agricultural visas for seasonal farm staff. So again, this is the sort of work that generally, you know, not a lot of people want to do. It's an incredibly hot time to be doing this sort of work outside. And then on top of all of the difficulties in terms of the work filling this very necessary role in our society, then being constantly the target of violence. And I'll leave it to the trial to figure out if this is a good instance of this. It certainly doesn't look good based on the video. It looks like someone willingly running through a group. I can't read his mind, I can't say that that's what it is. But as of right now, he has been released from jail, that being Daniel Gonzalez. So we will see as they as they move forward in, you know, in, in the trial. Any other yeah. thoughts? Yeah, this is kind of like what we were talking about earlier. And I think that this theme is present in a lot of stories that we talk about on shows like this one. But it, there really is a flip that a switch that gets flipped whenever you go from saying, you know what, I don't agree with this, but I'm now now I don't see you anymore as a human being, right? Now I don't yeah. think that you deserve the respect of a human being. And these people who do these jobs in this heat, it's so devastating. Even you see like construction workers on the side of the street, right? Regardless of their immigration status, whatever it is, they are hot. They are working hard. They're here in Texas. We also don't have any trees to shade <laughs> our like a lot of our, our streets, especially out in the suburbs. They are hot and they're just like scrounging under, you know, whatever shade they can find. It's really hard to see sometimes, you know. Just that on its own, just seeing a person as a human being and full stop, just and stop there. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know why that's so hard for some people to do. And I think that that really is a, a switch that gets flipped in your brain at some point where you can no longer distinguish from your politics and humanity and just like seeing people as people. And that, that's a really, yeah. uh, that must be a, a tough bridge to cross. Yeah, and look, you, you point out the fact that there were trees and potentially shade, I suppose. It's hard to tell from that distance. So again, I, I'm, I'm not God and I'm not Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. I can't say definitively exactly what happened. I'm just saying what we saw and what it looks like. Um, as of right now, I'm sure people are wondering what, what is happening with this guy. He has been, uh, he's now cooperating with detectives, uh, has received a $50,000 bond and uh, is, is facing a charge of felony hit and run, which seems uh, quite accurate in this particular case. Uh, that said, just for context to what we were talking about earlier, uh, here is a re recent clip from Fox talking about migrants in New York. Sean, we must take care of our Americans first and foremost. We didn't ask for these people. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know who's paying for them to come here. And then once they reach the border, our 
nonprofit agencies, Catholic charities and others, ask them what city they want to go to. They need to go back to where they came from because they serve no purpose here. They have no negotiable skills. It's not yeah. going to help America. It's going to cost us money and destroy our cities. And by the way, the numbers in New York are nothing compared to border states like Texas. Nothing. Uh, anyway, great report. They serve no purpose. They have no negotiable skills. They'll cost us money. Goes to Sean Hannity. And I appreciate a good yes and for improv. But I feel like you could have pushed back a little bit against that Sean Hannity if you didn't agree with every syllable that came out of his mouth. These people serve no purpose. Like I thought when he said these people need to go back where they came from, that's usually the marker that you're not the good guy in the story. But it takes extra work to get to the point of these purples, these people serve no purpose. They literally, like if all you cared about was the jobs that jet like in terms of like, I know that they think of people cross the border and then that's it, they're here, they're a drain in society for the rest of time. That's not at all how migrant work works. People cross the border and then go back and then come back. It's seasonal in many cases, working tons of jobs, very much having a variety of different roles beyond just the fact that they're human beings, particularly determined, hardworking human beings that like, how do I need to convince this guy that America is historically strengthened by desperate people who wants to come and work and contribute? That is the entire story of our civilization. And every single step of the way, there have been people like, yeah, but not these ones. And he receives no pushback. He is considered a hero on Fox News. Do you think that thoughts. people like Sean Hannity, after they're done running these segments on Fox News, they go outside in New York City and go down to what the whole all cart? That's what they do. You know, mm -hmm. this is all New York City of all places. You want to talk about immigrants and how we didn't? What's on the Statue of Liberty? That's the home of Ellis Island. That's where they go. My own family, when they immigrated from South America, that's where they went. My family, they were in Queens, they were in Manhattan, they were working in Manhattan, and then you know, my brothers and I were born in Connecticut later. It doesn't make any sense. It's all fear mongering for the sake of fear mongering. And they know that the people who watch shows like Sean Hannity's program on Fox News aren't going to question anything because they don't know. They have no idea what goes on in places like New York City because they all live in these very rural areas in, in America across the country, yeah. right? And I'm not saying there's not Republicans in other more urban parts of the country, but I'm saying the majority of their voters do come from more rural areas. And even the ones in the very, the a little bit more suburban areas, they stick to themselves, they stick to their communities. They don't really know a whole lot of what goes on in places like the city. Yeah. Actually, JR and I were talking about that one time and he was saying, you know, when he was growing up in St. Louis, they they like never go into the city, you know? So, I think it's really easy for programs like Sean Hannity's to focus on, you know, to demonize cities and what goes on there because they know yeah. that the majority of their audience has no idea. They'll just take them at their word. Yeah, they they get all of their news from Fox News who just shows them 3-year-old footage of a flame in a city or whatever and that's mm -hmm. all they think it is. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com/the damage report and you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.